Welcome back to Mental Math. Infinity to the power of zero. Now, this looks straightforward, but there's a subtle tension here. One perspective says anything to the power of zero should be one. Another says infinity raised to any power stays infinity. So what happens when these two ideas collide? Think of this as a mathematical tug of war with two fundamental rules pulling in opposite directions. First, there's the rule that any non-zero number raised to the power of zero gives you one. If we follow this rule, our answer leans toward one. But then there's the property that infinity raised to any positive power stays infinity. This rule pushes us toward infinity instead. When fundamental rules clash like this, the expression doesn't settle on a single value. Mathematicians call this an indeterminate form. What this means is there's no universal answer. The value depends entirely on context, specifically on the functions that are producing the infinity and the zero. To make sense of this, we need limits. We consider a function f of x that approaches infinity raised to the power of another function g of x that approaches zero. The standard technique here is an elegant algebraic move I like to call the logarithmic trick. Let's set a variable y equal to our expression. The goal here is to bring the exponent g of x down from its elevated position. Taking the natural logarithm of both sides will do exactly that. So the natural log of y equals the natural log of the entire expression. Here we're using the logarithm power rule. It says the log of something raised to a power equals the power times the log of that something. This rule lets us bring the exponent g of x down to the front as a multiplier. And now our equation becomes the natural log of y equals g of x times the natural log of f of x. Notice how this transforms our original infinity to the zero problem into a different indeterminate form, zero times infinity. And this is a form we know how to work with. Let's see how this plays out. We'll explore three examples that yield three entirely different results. First up, a case where the answer turns out to be one. Consider the limit as x approaches infinity of x to the power of 1 over x. Here x grows without bound, while 1 over x shrinks toward 0. Let y equal x to the power of 1 over x. We apply our log trick to both sides. The natural log of y equals the natural log of x to the power of 1 over x. Using the power rule, we bring the exponent down. This gives us the natural log of y equals the natural log of x, all divided by x. As x approaches infinity, we get an infinity over infinity indeterminate form. This is exactly the kind of situation where L'Hopital's rule shines. L'Hopital's rule tells us that for these indeterminate forms, we can take the derivative of the top and bottom separately, then evaluate the limit. We'll differentiate the top, the natural log of x and the bottom x. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, and the derivative of x is just 1. Now we evaluate this simpler limit. As x approaches infinity, 1 over x shrinks to 0, so the limit is 0. But remember, this is the limit of the natural log of y, not y itself. To solve for y, we need to reverse the logarithm. We can do this by exponentiating both sides. So e to the power of the limit of the natural log of y equals e to the power of zero. Because the exponential function is continuous, we can swap the limit. And the function, giving us the limit of y, equals e to the zero. And any non-zero number to the power of zero is one. Therefore, the limit of our original expression is one. Now for our second case. With just a small tweak, we can make the answer come out to E. 
Consider the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x, all raised to the power of 1 over x. Let's set y equal to this expression. Again, we take the natural logarithm of both sides. The natural log of y equals the natural log of e to the x, all to the 1 over x. We apply the power rule to bring the exponent down. This gives us the natural log of y equals 1 over x times the natural log of e to the x. The natural log and e are inverse functions, so they cancel each other out, leaving just x. Our expression simplifies to 1 over x times x. This is simply x divided by x, which, of course, simplifies to 1. So the limit of the natural log of y is 1. Exponentiating both sides will solve for the limit of y. Using the continuity of the exponential function, we find the limit of y is e to the first power, which is simply e. So we've seen the answer be 1, and we've seen it be e. Can we make it infinity? Absolutely. Let's look at the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x squared, all raised to the 1 over x power. We set y equal to the expression and apply the natural logarithm. The natural log of y is the natural log of our entire expression. Using the power rule, the exponent comes to the front. We have 1 over x times the natural log of e to the x squared. Again, the log and e cancel, leaving us with x squared. The expression simplifies to 1 over x times x squared. This is x squared divided by x, which simplifies to just x. The limit of the natural log of y as x approaches infinity is therefore infinity. Exponentiating gives us our final answer. The limit of y is e to the power of infinity, which is infinity. We have three different functions all of the form infinity to the zero, yet they approach three completely different values. Let's visualize this. We'll plot our three functions on a coordinate plane. First, here's y equals x to the power of 1 over x in blue. Watch as it climbs, peaks, then gradually settles down, approaching 1. Next, our second function, which simplified to just y, equals e. It's a horizontal line shown in green. Finally, our third function, which simplified to y equals e to the x. This red curve explodes to infinity. The graph makes it undeniable. Three expressions, all of the form infinity to the zero, yielding three completely different results. One, e, and infinity. So what's the final verdict? Infinity to the power of zero is fundamentally indeterminate. It has no single value. The answer isn't simply one or infinity. It's really a question of which function wins the race. It all comes down to how quickly the base grows to infinity compared to how quickly the exponent shrinks to zero. And calculus specifically limits gives us the tools to resolve this battle case by case. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, give it a like and subscribe for more mental math challenges.